Welcome to Evergreen Learning Spotlight. Today we're chatting with two students and a teacher from Legacy High School about an innovative program that involves internships and mentorships. Let's meet our guests now. Joining me are Jerry Joyce, the business teacher at Legacy High School, Amanda Washbond, and Cora Hall, who are both seniors at Legacy. Welcome. Hi, how are you today? So, Jerry, I'm going to start with you. The program is called Youth First, and it's a partnership. Can you talk a little bit about what the program is and what the various components are? Well, Carol, um, it's a 15-hour week commitment outside of the normal classroom for our students. Um, they come in an additional two and a half hours a week for a class. They also spend eight hours a week in an internship opportunity. And they also spend four hours, I think it's four and a half hours is remaining, um, doing homework um, for either this class or other, other uh, support their other class work. And with it, they're learning real world work skills for the 21st century. So like it's good for now and as they progress and through mm -hmm. life. So how long has Legacy been involved with this program? This is our first year with it. Um, last year, Youth First was with Lewis and Clark. It was our first year, inaugural year. It worked out really well. Now it's our first chance that we have to work with it, and it's working out equally well. Now, is it for all students at Legacy, or what's the criteria? The criteria is um, students were, um, they applied for the program. And then based on the applicants, then we asked staff recommendations. Then we cross-reference that with credits needed to graduate. And then from that poll, we had 39 applicants for 20 positions. And then we took our 20 students from that poll. And at the end of the year, what is the goal? What's the hope that these students will achieve? We're hoping that they will all graduate on time um, and that they will come out of the program with real world skills now, like how to interview for a job, how to write a resume, um, what work skills they need to be successful, whether it be to college, which these two young ladies are, are planning on doing, or if they're gonna go working right now in our community. We've identified these students as potential leaders in the community, and um, we think we're giving them both the real skills and the soft skills to enable that. Great, now Amanda, you want to be a pediatrician or go into something in the medical field. Talk to me a little bit about your thought process prior to Youth First and how that's changed. Well, before I got involved with PIC, I was more just going to school and I just wanted to graduate and then I thought maybe I'd go to college and wind up wherever. I didn't really think about being a pediatrician then. It was just more when the PIC program came to be when she asked me, you know, what's something that you would think about doing with your life right there. I was like, you know, I would be a pediatrician. I think that'd be a really cool job. And then when I got involved with PIC, all of a sudden all of these ideas turned into goals and plans. And then now I'm taking all the steps to actually become that and I'm putting my foot in the door. I'm starting to better understand clinicians and clients and all that, you know, nursing mumbo jumbo. So it's kind of cool. Now when you say PIC, you're talking partners in charge. Yeah. Pa partners in careers. Partners in careers, sorry. And that's who's running this program? Uh, it is, and Youth First is the offshoot of it, but the Partners in Careers is the overarching organization, yes. Great. Well, we have a video that actually explains a little bit more of that, so let's watch that and then we'll talk a little more after that's over. Partners in Careers created this program. Uh, as we saw, there was a need uh, in our community for young people to make sure they were getting their high school diploma. Um, and so we partnered with the Vancouver and Evergreen School Districts to run a program called Youth First, where we're taking students who are behind in credits toward graduation. And we pair them up at, uh, with mentors and out in community work sites where they have the opportunity to, to work, earn wages, and also receive credits that puts them um, on the path toward graduation. Any questions on this? About Students who are in the, in the Youth First program um, are actually enrolled in a, a class that's outside okay, of normal um, class hours. And that's an opportunity for them to work on their schoolwork and their other classes so that they're, they're progressing in their classes. Um, but it also gives us an opportunity to teach them uh, some soft skills and employment related uh, classes on how to get a job and how to keep a job and so on. We have opportunity to work on them with their resume um, and also go over uh, mock interviews with them and, and give them critique. And what's great about this too is the students get to critique each other and it ends up, the students actually end up teaching the class and uh, it's been real rewarding to be able to work with these kids one-on-one -on -one in the class hours um, and ensure that they are progressing in their, in their schoolwork at the same time. The internships are a critical piece of the Youth First program. 
Uh, we place students out in work sites around the community. We have 40 different work sites, and they're matched based on what their career interests are. Uh, for example, Cora is working at the uh, Furstenberg Community Center. Her goals are to become a personal trainer. And so she's working at their front desk, checking people in as they come to, uh, to work out and, and working with their members. She's done such an incredible job, they've actually hired her on to, to work there for them. Uh, Amanda has been a delight in the program. She, her goals are to become a nurse, and we have her working out at Community Services Northwest, where she's in a, a medical office, and she's greeting patients as they come in to check in for their appointments, get, calling them, confirming appointments, and she's been a real asset to her team out there. Okay. That'd be great. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, the internships has been a, a real valuable piece of the program, and specifically because the students have the opportunity to earn their first paychecks. Um, it's exciting to see the confidence, the self-esteem growing in each student, and really just more of the realization for them to know that they have what it takes to be successful in employment. Our goal with the Youth First program is to have it to be a community response, to have the community coming in support of these students. And we felt there was a strong need to make sure that these students were feeling connected to community instead of feeling isolated. And one of the ways that we do this is by doing community service projects. Just recently, we did a community service project for the Clark County Food Bank, uh, where they repacked over 12,000 pounds of food for needy families in our area. One of the highlights for students uh, in the program is that they have the opportunity to work with mentors um, and meet with them and learn about the industry and how they can best prepare themselves for, for their career field of choice. Uh, we do this by a simple luncheon where we uh, get the mentors and the students together and they have the opportunity to eat lunch and, and learn about these career fields. We saw tremendous results last year with our program. Uh, we graduated 100% of our eligible seniors, and all of those students have either gone on to college or are working. We are fully expecting to see the same results this year. That seems pretty exciting. So, Cora, you've got the two and a half hour class, your worksite internship, you have to do community service, plus you have your regular classes. Can you describe for us what, a, what your typical week is like yeah, definitely. Well, I have class from 8 to 10.25, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and every other Friday. We don't have class on Wednesdays. And um, I usually work Mondays, 3.45 to 9, and Fridays, 12.30 to 2.45, and um, every other Saturday. So that counts as my hours for my internship. And then we have pick every Tuesday, so after class we go to that. and. Yeah, that's so pretty, pretty much busy it. Schedule. Yeah, it's pretty busy, um, and then homework on top of that. So, so Amanda, what have the highlights been for you being part of this program? Um, I think just how fun it is. I didn't really expect it to be as fun as it really is. I thought it was just going to be more seriousness, and I think even when we're in class, everything we're doing is fun and upbeat and positive. And when I'm at my work site, everything's fun and upbeat and positive. And when I'm at the workshop it's even more fun and upbeat and positive because that's like Dave's domain so all right well Cora talk about some of the skills you've learned through your internship and, and now your job that will help you as you move into your career I've learned a lot about customer service um, I realize that it's a number one thing and when I go into work every day I'm interacting a lot with the customers um, as far as like if they need help learning how to use different equipment or so on and so forth and I know that that's also a big um, thing in any job or in career you want to get into. Also I've learned a lot of I guess you could say receptional like um, things like I answer a lot of phone calls you know I schedule appointments for personal trainers and the massage therapist and yeah I've learned a lot through that internship. So. Oh, great. So Amanda what are some of the skills you're learning in, and where are you doing your internship at? Um, Community Services Northwest, and I am basically learning like typing skills. I type a lot faster than I used to, and I'm a lot better at multitasking because when you're trying to answer a phone, schedule someone, check someone in while emailing a clinician to let them know they're there, it gets really like overwhelming. And I've taught myself how to get through it and just remain calm and smile, and. I think it's also teaching me a lot of patience because it is for mental, you know, mental illness. So a lot of the people that come in, they don't have a lot of patience with me. So I have to have more patience with them and be understanding of the situation and what's going on. And I also have learned a lot of clinician client confidentiality rules, like how you have to whisper anything that you say about them. You cannot show anything that reveals anything about them. 
and that's something I never knew that, you know, in the medical field you really have to be 100% careful with, and now I understand that. So I think when I'm done with this job and I go to apply somewhere else, I think it's cool that I can put that on my resume, that I do understand all of that, and they don't have to reteach that or re-put that in my head anymore. So what are your plans for next year? Um, next year I will be graduating in June, so after the summer I'm going to be enrolling in college and then I'm leaving my job with letters of recommendation and so I currently also work at Dairy Queen part-time so hopefully I will be able to quit there and get another job somewhere as a receptionist in a medical field while I work through college. Nice. Now Corey you're also graduating so what are your plans? Uh, my plan to attend Clark College and um, hopefully get another job so I can be making more money. So. And you want to do um, personal training, do they have some kind of program at Clark that you can go yeah, into? Yeah, they actually have a really great program there for that, so that's what I plan on doing. All right. Well, Jerry, back to you. This is the first year of this program at Legacy. How do you know you're being successful? What are what will it look like at the end? Um, we have a couple ways. One is um, credits, because they will have earned those credits, and it's a career choice as a curriculum. Um, two, credits for worksite learning, and that is the documented hours that they have earned base for working and earning credits that way. Um, three is, um, I know when we did the interviewing the first round and the resumes, we started to start talking about it and as opposed to like big concept or maybe a couple people had a couple that were good on this question but not this one. Um, they, our last session that we had, they actually were doing an awesome job of critiquing themselves and that was all because of, and that was a, and it, prime example of what they had learned because they were now taken over. No, 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 you need to do this and you need to do this. So um, all the real world skills and the credits, I think, are all right. Yeah, I guess the best way to answer that. When you were talking earlier also um, about some of the mock interviews and how students were critiquing each other in the mock interviews, do you think that's valuable to have that kind of critique from your fellow students or does it mean more coming from Jerry or Dave? Well, I think from the students, it's when you hear it from the teacher, you know, you get to that lecture point where you're like, okay. But when you hear it from the students, they also point out things that the teachers didn't really notice or didn't really catch. And it's not, I feel like they're not rude about it. They're letting you know and they're trying to help you. And on top of that, when they do tell you what you messed up on, they're giving you a compliment with it and telling you something you did good on. And I think it's a lot better coming from them because they notice the smaller things, I think, than just the big one. So they're not being too harsh on you? Or? No, I think it's definitely helpful because, I mean, it's all just to help you be better at, you know, what you're trying to do, so. How important is it for schools to develop these types of partnerships for our students? I think it's critical in today's society. Um, right now the big push is college, 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 but what businesses hire are people. You know, skills are good, but if we all get hired based strictly upon skills, we just have a resume and that's it, or an application, that's it. It's all about your personal connections. And I think that's one of the really cool things about our program is we stress the importance of the one-on-one -on -one person and how do you interact with people and how do you treat them and what is their overall professionalism and what is the expectation and are you looking at it through your eyes, the person who wants to be employed, or what does the employer want? And if you're looking at it through their eyes, then you have an opportunity. If you're just looking at it for what you want, that's what every potential employee wants. So, so Jerry, in addition to you know the skills of answering a phone and customer service, what are some of the other things that students are learning that are going to help them? Um, one of the things that we focus on also is informational interviews. In other words, like, hey, if you want to become a lawyer, what is the best way to find out about it? Well, from the school side, you know, talk to your local college, they'll tell you how to become one. But what, how do you find out, like, what a lawyer actually does day to day? Well, that is by informational interviewing. And that is call up and say, hey, my name is Amanda, and I'll think I'll become a lawyer. May I have a half hour of your time to talk about, like, what you do every day. And so this way it gives them the skills to actually find out, hey, is that worthy of pursuing or before they go in and run up college debt and waste their time for an idea, they can actually talk to a reality. Um, also, we were talking to them, uh, the one of the most important aspects about interviewing and finding a job was looking through the eyes of the potential employer. Yes, you want a job and so does every other um, applicant out there, but the people that get hired are people that speak to the needs of the employer. So um, I think once our students recognize that, then that was the breakthrough. And I think that's what allows them to be so successful when they apply for jobs. Great. Well, I want to thank the three of you for joining us today and wish you the best of luck as you continue in your careers. Thank, thank you, you so much.